I've had my KTM 890 for one year, and I'm gonna give you my honest review about it. So like I said, I've had this KTM 890 Adventure for a year. I bought it in January 2021. And I thought I would hop on my backyard playground here, which is the South Carolina Adventure Route, and share some thoughts with you about the bike. Before I had this bike, I had a 2018 Africa Twin, which was an awesome bike. I don't want to badmouth it at all, but there were two things that caused it to not be a great fit for me personally. One of which is I am getting older and I have some physical ailments and picking that bike up, especially if it's loaded and especially if I'm solo, was a concern for me. The second item is I've had two shoulder surgeries and that bike did not have crews. So when I was doing a lot of miles, especially on the highway or even back roads where I had a, a chance to get a break if I would have crews, uh, that bike just did not offer a great opportunity for it. I have a lot of issues with neuropathy and pain in my shoulder and arm and a throttle lock is only so helpful. So those are the two things that ultimately caused me to sell my Africa Twin and look for a middleweight adventure bike that had crews. And at the time there weren't a lot of options. One of the options though was the KTM 890. So let's talk about how the KTM 890 Adventure feels. Compared to my Africa Twin, it feels smaller. I guess that's no surprise because it is smaller. My Africa Twin gave the feeling that you were sitting in a cockpit or in the bike when you were sitting on it. This bike, when I first rode it, felt like I was sitting on it versus in it definitely feels smaller. I came back to the salesman and I said, man, this thing feels like a toy compared to my Africa Twin. And mainly because it's lighter, it's more flickable, center of gravity is lower because of the saddlebag fuel tanks that it has. And, uh, and it's definitely got, you know, a decent power to weight ratio as well. I think this bike is freaking amazing with the traction control. Uh, when I first got it and I had the OEM tires on it, I went on a, on a group ride uh, when the South Carolina Adventure Route was being launched. And we hit a muddy section on those OEM tires, which are basically street tires. And this traction control system on this bike handled it perfectly. I had no issues going through a muddy section where other people were having trouble on uh, even big block tires. Uh, and so, yeah, and then you add to the fact that in rally mode, uh, you really have full adjustment of the traction control all the way up and down the scale. Um, and that's really nice because you can, you can run that up and down on the fly. You can turn your ABS on and off on the fly. Everything on my Africa Twin, I had to actually stop to turn on my ABS, which was a real headache and a real, a real annoyance for people I was riding with who did not have to do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, this bike in terms of handling and performance with the weight down low, like I said, because of the way the fuel tanks are, the lighter weight, power to weight ratio being great. I mean, this bike is, it performs wonderfully. Another thing that I liked about this bike was really it doesn't require the addition of a bunch of protection, you know, like my uh, crash bars and such that I had on my Africa Twin. Those things aren't light and they're not really needed on this bike. I know companies sell them, but uh, I mean, shoot, when I had this bike on the Transamerica Trail last summer, I had it on its side a few times and there was one time climbing a pass where I actually had to spin it around on the fuel tanks, but those fuel tanks have these fusible covers on them that are designed to, to be scratched up and stuff. And I mean, it was not an issue. Those fuel tanks are 
tough just like advertised. So if you were going to buy one of these, whether it's a standard or an R, I wouldn't put crash bars on it. That's me personally. It's just a uh, added weight that you don't need. <clears throat> well, I was a little bit hesitant to get the KTM because of perceived reliability. You know, you get on the forums and you read a lot of trash talk about KTM reliability. Some of that trash talk is probably warranted. I've had a few issues with mine, but they've been warrantied. One is the screen. You know, the 790s and the 890s had issues with the screens fogging. Mine had that issue pretty severely. They warrantied it and replaced it. And I've got a new screen and the new one fogs too. Not as badly as the original one, but it still fogs, but I can live with it. Uh, the other issue that I've had has been uh, my front wheel seems to be very hard to get into balance. I don't know if it's out of round. I kind of think it's out of round a little bit, but uh, you definitely get some front end hop when you're in that 35 mile an hour range, 35 to 40 mile an hour range. And I've tried different tires. I've rebalanced things. It never completely goes away. Sometimes it's better than other times, depending on which tire and how well it's balanced and stuff. But I've never gotten it to go away. So I'm going to kind of blame that on the wheel. I've taken it back to the dealership. They said there's no issues with the front wheel. I don't know. I'd be interested to hear if anybody else has has that same issue so feel free to leave a comment about it if you do but otherwise i mean i've got 6700 miles on this bike i rode the western half of the transamerica trail on it this past summer from colorado to oregon and i've ridden a bunch of other local routes i've ridden the uh you know big sections of the south carolina adventure route i've gone to a few different motorcycle rallies it's a great bike i mean Compared to the Africa Twin, it's lighter, so it gets bounced around a little bit more on the freeway. But I didn't buy this to be a sport tour or, or anything. I bought it to be a, a, an adventure bike. So, uh, you know, there is no perfect bike that fits every situation. And for me, this bike has been a great compromise. Is it my forever bike? I don't know about that. Uh, it may be, it may not be. Um, but uh, so far, so good. So why did I get the 890 Adventure Standard and not the 890 Adventure R? Well, really, I mean, I'm in my 50s. I don't need to ride a bike like I stole it. And already compared to my old bike, my Africa Twin, uh, the suspension on this is better. You know, I have not been able to outride this suspension on this bike, but then again, I was never a motocrosser. I'm not a pro rider, you know, so um, this suspension works great for what I need. I have short legs. I have a 29 inch inseam on a good day. So the seat height on this bike is a little shorter than the R, which is good for me. I also saved like a grand by buying the standard instead of the R. One other reason I uh, got this bike instead of the R is that it has a two-year warranty, whereas the R comes with a one-year warranty. One of the things that I don't like about uh, this bike, or I guess it's KTM's marketing in general, is that uh, you have to pay extra for the electronic upgrades you know, like the rally mode and such, cruise control. I just get the feeling that that's nickeling and diming their customers to death when a lot of the mid-weights coming out now, that stuff's standard. So, you know, if I was looking for a new bike now that, that uh, met my criteria, my criteria being a middleweight adventure bike that has cruise, you know, I might also be considering some of the new bikes coming out like the Aprilia Touareg or something. And they come standard with Cruise. And they wouldn't have had to pay extra for it. So that's a, that's a little beef I have about the KTM. Do I have buyer's regret? No, this has been a great bike. It's done everything that I've asked it to do. Performs great. 
wonderful power to weight ratio. It's got, I mean, it's got 100 horsepower, more than I'll ever use. I think a lot of times people chase these, the horsepower numbers and the performance, and really on an adventure bike, do you ever really use it all? Not unless you're riding it like a enduro or motocross bike, and that's not me. I ride to get to the destination. I'll put a full list of all my modifications at the bottom of the description, so if you're interested in what mods I do have on my bike, you can take a look there. So that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this review and that it was helpful, and I'll see you on the next video.